So in this video, we're looking at a full example for earned value analysis. So as always, we'll always have a table of dependencies, but in this case, we're actually given a field report of what's actually happened in our project at the end of some day, at the end of day seven. So first of all, let's go ahead and draw our Gantt chart. So first of all, we'd have activity A, it's at the beginning of the project because it has no predecessor and its duration is two days. So we'll draw in activity A just like that. Activity B, its predecessor is A and it's three days long, so it will start here and go one, two, three days out. Activity C depends on B and it's three days, so we'll have activity C, one, two, three, just like that. Activity D also depends on B and it's two days long, so we find the end of B, come down to D and go out for two days. And then activity E depends on D and it's three days long, so we will start here and go one, two, three. So this is what we would expect to happen based on our plan from our original table of dependencies. But we have received this field report at the end of day seven from our field manager. So we're gonna find day seven here. And we'll put this in, uh, we'll put a line in here. This is our field report date. And our field report is saying that activity A, by the, by the end of day seven, activity A is 100% complete. So it's already been done and that's, that's good. We expected that to be finished on day two. This doesn't actually say when it was completed, but at least we know it is complete. It also says activity B is complete. So again, we know that activity B is complete. Doesn't exactly say when it finished, but that's great. We know it's done. Activity C is 33% complete. So that means that <clears throat> activity C is expected to take three days of work, but they've only actually finished up until this point here, right? They finished a third or 33% of the activity uh, and it's cost some, and it also has the, the incurred costs of the activities, which may or may not match up with the planned costs. Okay, uh, activity D, 50% has been completed by the end of day seven. So we were expecting activity D to be fully completed here based on our original plan, but they're saying that only 50% has been completed. So only up until this line, that amount, we can even shade this in. This amount of activity D has been completed and this amount of activity C has been completed. And activity E hasn't started yet, and that was to be expected, uh, but also good just to notice that we're, we're not ahead of schedule by having already started activity E. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and start filling out all the information in this table. So the actual cost of work performed is literally just how much we paid for the work that's been done so far. So activity A incurred $600, so its actual cost of work performed is $600. Uh, activity B cost $1,400, so its actual cost is $1,400. Notice uh, we intended on, we, we planned for B to cost $1,200, it actually cost $1,400, so its actual cost of work performed is $1,400. Activity C, so far, has incurred $500 for the work performed, so we put in $500 here. And activity D has incurred $200 for the work that's being performed, so we have 200. And then activity E hasn't started yet, we haven't spent any money on it, so we get a zero for that. So the total to date, if you just add up these numbers, we'll get $2,700, 2700 the next up is the budgeted cost of work performed. So this is how much money we were expecting to pay for the amount of work that was actually completed. So that means we, we've completed 100% of activity A and we planned activity A to cost $600. So the budgeted cost of work performed for activity A is $600, right? That's exactly what we expected. We budgeted to pay $600 to complete activity A by 100%. So activity B, is also 100% complete by the time of this field report. Uh, and activity B, we budgeted $1,200 for that. That's what we expected. So we will put in 1,200, All right? That's the budgeted cost of the work that was performed and we performed the entire activity and we expected it to cost $1,200 for the total cost of that activity. Activity C, we've completed 33% of it and we expected the total cost of the whole activity C to be $1,200 or $400 a day is what we budgeted for. So the budgeted cost of the actual work that was performed, because we only actually performed one full day's worth of work, well, we've budgeted $400 for one day. So the budgeted cost of work performed is 400. Then for activity D, we've completed 50% of the activity by the end of the seventh day, which means 50% of this two day activity means we've actually accomplished one full day of work. 
We budgeted at the beginning for $200 per day for activity D. Uh, so that means that the budgeted cost of the actual work performed, we only completed one day, it would be $200. Again, activity E, uh, we, ha we haven't budgeted anything for activity E yet uh, because it wasn't, it wasn't scheduled to start. So that will be another zero. So if you just add these up, the total to date for BCWP would be 2400 Now for BCWS, this is the budgeted cost of work scheduled. This is how much we expected to pay for each activity uh, that we had expected to finish by the reporting date. Right? We had scheduled activity A to be completely done, activity B to be completely done, activity D to be completely done, and we had scheduled activity C to be two-thirds done. So what is the budgeted cost for those targets? Well, for activity A, that's simple. We had expected it, the total cost to be $600, and we had expected 100% of it to be complete. Uh, well before day seven. So the BCWS, $600, budgeted cost of work scheduled. Again, activity B, before the seventh, the end of the seventh day, we expected 100% to be complete uh, and costing us $1,200. So the BCWS is $1,200. Now for activity C, we budgeted uh, or we scheduled Now, for activity C, by the end of the seventh day, we were expecting two-thirds of the project or of the activity to be done. So two-thirds of it would be two days, and we expected activity C to cost us $400 a day. So that would be, we would be expecting to have spent $800 on activity C at the end of the seventh day based on our original plan. So that would be budgeted cost of work scheduled for activity C would be $800. Activity D. Well, we expected activity D to be completely done by the end of the seventh day based on our original plan. Uh, and activity D was $200 a day for two days or just $400 total cost if it's completely done. So that's what we expected, the budgeted cost of the work scheduled uh, because we had scheduled activity D to be completely done by this date was $400. Now, if you uh, look at this activity E, well, we hadn't scheduled anything to be spent on activity E yet. And again, this will be zero. So if we just add up all of these together, we will get a total budgeted cost of work scheduled of $3,000. So we were expecting by day seven, if this plan had gone according to plan, that we would have spent $3,000 at the end of day seven. Okay, so if you remember from the previous videos, CPI is the cost performance index and CV is the cost variance. SPI is the schedule performance index and SV is the schedule variance. And their formulas are down here for you. So we can go ahead and we can fill out the, the total project to date for the CPI, CV, SPI, and SV. Uh, it's not as meaningful to do it on an individual activity. You can, uh, because these are all just ratios and uh, simple expressions. But the more important thing is we want to find out if the entire project is ahead of schedule, behind schedule, etc., or above budget or below budget. So for CPI, all we do is we take BCWP divided by ACWP. So we have 2400 divided by 2700. That's going to give us 0 0.889. Now, if you recall, uh, if we have a CPI that's less than one, that means the project is over budget. Uh, so we can also do cost variance. That's BCWP minus ACWP. So we have BCWP. So we have 2,400 minus 2,700. That gives us a value of negative 300. Uh, and also for cost variance, this is another way to tell if the project is above or below budget. Uh, for the cost variance, uh, a negative value means the project is over budget. So we can tell right away we're spending more money than we have expected to spend, which you can see right here because we've the actual cost of the work performed is $2,700, but the budgeted cost of the work performed is $2,400. So we were expecting to only pay $2,400 for the work that had been done, but we paid $2,700. But notice that neither of these things say anything about whether or not the project is ahead or behind of schedule. That's what the SPI and the SV are for. So for the schedule performance index, we have BCWP divided by BCWS. So we have 2,400 divided by 3,000. That's going to give us 0 0.8. And if we had an SPI that is less than one, then that means the project is behind schedule. Uh, similarly, we can do the schedule variance. We have BCWP minus BCWS. So we had 2,400 minus 3,000. That gives us a value of negative 600. 
And the actual number isn't as meaningful, it's just if the number is negative, if we have an SV of less than zero, or negative value, then that's an indication that our project is behind schedule. And again, you can kind of see that by looking at the Gantt chart that we were expecting to have uh, also day the, the second third or day two of activity C done, and we we're expecting to have all of activity D done, but those haven't been completed yet. So we are actually, you can see by this that you know visually we are behind schedule. But this is a more official way of actually seeing if we are behind schedule, ahead of schedule, or also if we are over budget or under budget. So in this case, our project is over budget and behind schedule.